What's up, everybody? This is the Quad with Chris Young. As always, I'm Chris. We got Haley the Bear. That is me. I am the Bear. Producer Josh. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. And Ryan from Miami. That is me. I am Ryan from Miami. You stop it. Wow. You know, wow. You are, that, hey, that got you not that, to talk? That, that got you not to talk? That's the least he's ever said. It's true. In like months. It's true. I also have 99 problems, but a pitch ain't one. Coffee mug. Um, if, uh, if I look tired if for anyone watching this on, uh, on YouTube, um, I did the thing where, uh, my phone fell behind my bed. Like the headboard. Yeah. And so I, uh, I just woke up, <laughs> but, uh, we're here. We're going to get through a podcast. We're going to do it anyway. It's okay. <laughs> we're going to do it. We're going to do it. Um, who won the poll? You know, before, I mean, yes, the Cubs won. We knew it's a feel good story. We love, right. we love to see it. I was very surprised how many people voted for WrestleMania 14. It was, <clears throat> it was down to WrestleMania and the Cubs. I can't believe that so many people that it beat the Ray Allen shot. Yeah. Yeah. That kind of blew my mind. I mean, yeah, I think there's a lot of Stone Cold Steve Austin, like uh, nostalgia out there, you know, for sure. There definitely is. Um, it's just interesting. I agree with you. I was very, I was very surprised. I, I kind of, I'm not saying I stack the polls sometimes, but I thought I put it against the Ray Allen shot thinking the Ray Allen shot was going to win. Right. That that would pick up. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and it didn't. That was really very interesting. Well, there you go. Everyone likes a stone cold. <laughs> okay. Let's, uh, or a stunner. We love a stunner. <laughs> the stunner. <laughs> it was a stunner. All right. No. Uh, let's go to, uh, let's go to sports. NBA basketball. The playoffs are here again. Things are getting interesting. I I will say I was kind of surprised that the Bucks blew out the Celtics the way they did um, in Game One, but they they were also refing that and allowing a lot of physicality. And I wonder if that changes um, for Game Two. We will see. Um, the Celtics shot a career low for two pointers <laughs> in a game. Yeah. Ten two pointers. Ten two pointers. Was that the on them Celtics or the defense? Celtics shot a career low. Like like not just one player. The Celtics shot a career low. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I, I mean I like what I'm seeing out of Milwaukee. Their defensive scheme on what they're doing to Jason Tatum is very, very, very smart. They will they will throw Jason they will let Jason get by the first defender. They will throw a smaller guy to make Jason Tatum try to pull up or do a quick floater. And then they have Giannis trailing <laughs> to block the hell out of it. And it really, it's, I mean, without that, unless he starts kicking out on every single drive. I mean, it, they're going to make an adjustment. Mm-hmm. They're, they're not going to, that's not going to happen. You know, I mean, they, they might play lockdown defense like that for the rest of the series, but they're not going to shoot. 10 two pointers in a game. I think that that's not going to that, happen. Milwaukee's defense is literally designed, though, as Josh was saying, to allow three pointers. And Boston hit 18, but Ryan, they didn't have anything else easy in the paint. Ryan, your internet sucks right now. Yeah. <laughs> you're, you're a little wonky, but it's okay. It's all right. We still love you, though. Uh, Even when you freeze. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, so, by the way, it, I, I'm kind of feeling good about your prediction. <laughs> Wait, what was his prediction again? Was he Golden State in the finals. <laughs> that was preseason. Oh. Yeah. I, I haven't been paying attention to much of any basketball this week. So and Ryan's gone. <laughs> oh. I really wish he wouldn't have done that because I have to get up and manually. I know you have to go do let it. him back in, uh, yeah. which really just you, annoys me now. Do you want me to get up since I'm <laughs> yes, on the edge? Yes, please. <laughs> Will you? What, which button do I hit? Where it says admit. <laughs> yeah, and careful about getting in front of that. It's not a touch screen. Nope. It's a oh. computer. Oh. No. Nope. <laughs> <laughs> Click on it. Click on it. Click. There you go. You can go back now. <laughs> it's that's. Okay, I'm waiting. Like she had, she had like yeah. a Polaroid, and then tried to like make it bigger with her. Fingers. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Hi, Ryan. Ryan, you missed uh, Haley trying better? to. 
<laughs> you 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 missed Haley. Um, not she, she touched my screen on my laptop, thinking that it was a, <laughs> I it was it was a, a touch, touch screen. screen. <laughs> Technology has somehow made us all dumber. It's just been a long oh, weekend, man. okay? <laughs> Monday, oh. Monday, you guys, we're thriving right now. <laughs> yeah, things are going great. Um, but yeah, your your prediction might come true. Who knows? I hope not. It's not what I bet on. Oh. What'd you bet on? I bet on Suns Bucks round two. Suns Bucks. Is this this is only the second round of? Yeah, this is round two. We still have the conference finals after this, and then the finals. Yeah. So there's still a ways to go. Um, baseball. Lots uh, lots going on. Shohei Otani with a uh, a a right groin pull is what they said. Oh no. I didn't. I didn't. I guess I wasn't aware that you you referred to the left and the right side of the groin. I figured it's all just one thing. Do you have, but, a, do you have an east and a west groin? I it's, just evidently you do. Huh. I I was unaware of that uh, particular piece of medical information. I thought it was all just one thing. If but anyone can do it, it how about, he can. Yep. I will say, and as I will sound like a robot here, that's fine. But the Mets and the Yankees, both the top the standings in their respective leagues at the end of April for the first time in 36 years. How about the Mecca showing up on the baseball time? It's it's early. (laughs) It is extremely early. We've done what, like 10 games? It's it's early. It's early. (laughs) But 20 games, by the way. And the other thing, the other thing I will say, and this is a shout out to Tennessee, the Vols. They had a pitcher, Ben Joyce, throw a 105 and a half mile per hour fastball. Fastest pitch in college baseball history. Wow. That is very fast and furious. Second fastest in any baseball history, trailing only Aroldis Chapman. Mm. I was going to say, I wondered I wondered who had it, if it was Aroldis Chapman. What was his, 106 or something like that? 105.8, so literally like three-tenths of a mile per hour fast. Sheesh. Man, um, there's definitely been like twenty something games, but still. Um, also, thank God it's still early because the Cubs are second to last. We're tied with uh Well, no, wow, no, wow. The Reds are three and nineteen. Reds are not very good. What no, the hell? They're, they're very. Weren't bad. they like decent they, uh, two years ago? <laughs> it was longer. They than have two tied. Years ago. They have tied for the second worst record through twenty two games since nineteen hundred, trailing only the nineteen eighty eight Orioles. Okay, so we're gonna we're, this year the Reds will be the the bets for the the, the Orioles did last year if we want to win millions of dollars apparently just throw the Reds into every every parlay you got let's go yeah let's do this what what is that noise I don't know it's, just we we we're off the rails it, yeah, it seems like it's I don't know it let's seems just like blame it's Ryan. Phone, phone noise but yeah I say we blame Ryan for everything. Okay. Heck yeah. <laughs> it's all Ryan's fault. <laughs> that doesn't um, seem very fair. I don't like this game. Well, you already sound like poop. <laughs> <laughs> that makes him so sad. <laughs> I would. Uh, I can't even. I can't even defend myself from sounding like poop. <laughs> <laughs> I would uh, also like to give a shout out to that uh, NFL draft. How about that draft? <sighs> First did, of all, what did you guys do, uh, dude? I didn't do anything. I didn't even watch it. I, no, I, I meant the, the Cowboys. No, no, we, oh. uh, we did. Hey, also nothing. We also did nothing. Well, isn't that, wasn't that the headline this morning? Was who had the worst draft, Cowboys or Steelers? <clears throat> awesome. <laughs> that was literally. But again, we the Bears needed. Um, what we needed was O line or someone in our field, like a, a wide receiver. And the first two people we drafted was a say. A safety and a center, I believe, were the first two things that we drafted. And I was like, what the hell? Like, that that's not anything that, that's not what we need to focus on. Did, did you get a tight end, too? Did you oh pick up another gosh. tight end? Actually, let me let me double check here did just you? to make sure. <laughs> because that would be, we got, uh, yeah, we got a CB at a, a wide receiver, O-line, defensive, O-line, O-line. It's another, just, sa- we got two safeties. It's just odd. A punter. I, I felt like... <laughs> Oh my gosh. I, what are you doing, Ryan? <laughs> He's Blair witching it so hard right now. Good Lord. <laughs> <laughs> Trying I, to move uh, to a better internet location. <laughs> <laughs> I, I felt like this is the first draft in a long time. That was lame. That I didn't really pay a whole lot of attention to. 
I felt that way too. Do you feel like outside of Hutchinson, like, is there really any, this just felt like a I mean, role player. Hutchinson player's... didn't go first. Actually, my, my, uh, my call was correct. Yeah. But like, he's sort of the name of the draft other than, the, eh? you know, I like, think... doesn't this feel like a bunch of role players just all the way through? I think this draft mainly, like, for us to focus on was to see who would get traded to get draft picks. Well, and it's, it's the latest in, what, uh, 25, 30 years that a quarterback has been drafted? Mm-hmm. And that's kind of, like, your your sexy pick normally is who's going to pick up a quarterback right. and when do they go. And, and there's and been, what, just, three quarterbacks that went? <laughs> I, I don't know. I couldn't tell you which quarterback <laughs> went first, which is the sad. Titans got The Titans got a quarterback. The Titans took uh, Malik Willis. Yeah, like way late, but the first six picks were all defensive. That's okay. So well, I believe I believe Kenny Pickett obviously went to the Pittsburgh Steelers uh, in was. the draft, which I yeah. which I think was the latest we've seen a quarterback selected. Yeah, the latest since nineteen ninety seven. And Pickett was the only that. QB taken in the first two rounds. You uh, um, you were Blair Witch in it, and you weren't paying attention. <laughs> I literally just nope. said that. Okay, all right, here's another stat for you. Um, <laughs> Pickett was the only quarterback taken in the first two rounds. That last happened in 2000, so a long time ago. Football. Actually, the, yeah, the, <laughs> yeah, okay, we're just going to move on. Um, <laughs> quick shout-out to our guy, friend of the program, Jason Fitz. Dusting off yeah. the fiddle yesterday to do the national anthem at the Nashville Football Club uh, opening game at the new stadium, right? Wait, he was yeah. in town? Yeah, he's in town. Oh, go to shut it. We could. I, oh, oh, God. Oh. <laughs> what chugged, just happened? Do you smell burnt toast right now? You okay? Oh, my goodness. I can't. Y'all, it, it's been a weekend. <laughs> It's 30, 30,109 people packing that park, the largest soccer specific stadium in the country. It, and it looked like it. It was electric on television too, watching Nashville SC. And also 5,000 parking spots for that 30,000 yeah. people, Ooh. which led to oh, a that's not good. nightmare of drivers and Ubers and all sorts of things. Especially because the, mm. the roads over there are not equipped for 5,000 people. Or 30,000 Or 30,000 people. 30, people for that matter. Well, well, that's what I'm saying. It looked beautiful, though. I mean, it looked beautiful on TV, right? And that's what matters. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Sure. All, All right. right, then. All right. Let's go to music. Music. Um, as we sit here in the real-time chart, we're at the end of a bar. is currently top 20. Yeah. So very, yes. very excited. Very excited about that. Um, been awesome being out, uh, did a couple different charity things this week. Um, had, <laughs> it confused the hell out of everybody cause I was gone Tuesday and Thursday for shows and they're like, what? <laughs> but, uh, went up to uh, Cleveland and did their St. Jude, uh, show that they do every year for St. Jude to raise money for them. And then did a thing with the Shepherd Center down in Atlanta um, alongside uh, the Charlie Daniels Journey Home Project. They do a tandem event every year and raised a whole bunch of money. A whole bunch of money for them. Um, just auctioning off one of my guitars. Somebody bought it for $50,000. So it was pretty cool. Dang. Yeah. You popular. No, so I think that was just excited to do something for charity. <laughs> Is that is that something I should Venmo you or send you a check? How, how should I go about yeah, that? Yeah, you you can Venmo me, right? That's good. Okay, yeah. you got it. Just <laughs> <laughs> oh man, uh, how's the rock band? <laughs> rock band's great. Um, appreciate all the love everyone was reaching out for. Uh, we've we've scheduled another date in the studio at the uh, the end of this month to write and record our other two songs for our debut EP. Love it. Falcon Force. Falcon Force. <laughs> Wait, is that the sound they make or is that a chicken? It is now. It is now. <laughs> it, it was a mix between a chicken and a falcon, I think. Yeah. You kind of did like a little bit of the dirty bird too, just then for people that and are the not. Pigeon. Uh, what does a falcon make? Like what's the sound that a falcon It's like a makes? screech. That's, I think it does screech actually. It screeches. <laughs> I could, uh, or it like has cute little, little chirps. So I used to work with animals and when they're in the thing, they kind of used to like kind of, when they weren't being like aggressive or loud, it just kind of like a, like a little chirp. 
falcon. That sounds like a mouse. I, I, I'm not a bird. I can't make perfect bird noises. Okay. You're a bear, not a bird. Ah! Here we go. <laughs> so bear noise, okay? Nope. She just replaced the bear noise with what she just did. <laughs> five, <laughs> yeah, a little chirp. Yeah. Yeah, I like mine better. Ah! <laughs> <laughs> That doesn't sound very intimidating. That sounds like uh, a seagull right it there. Does not, it does not sound very intimidating <laughs> But at our all. band does. Our <laughs> band is brutal. Very intimidating. Very intimidating. <clears throat> you make that guitar squeal. <laughs> <laughs> what the hell? That's what it's called, right? No? Okay. Sure. Yeah, we'll go with that. You know yeah. when you like rub the neck and it's cool? Oh, hey. We can go ahead oh. and Whoa. Just remove that. What is that? Uh, <laughs> yes. I don't know what's what happening. That? I don't know what's happening. Y'all, oh, again. Man. All right, let's, let's continue, um, sir. <laughs> let's not bury the lead. You also uh, put out a song with... <gasps> yes, that was going to be... Some friends of I yours. I was going to go, yeah. what, are, what are you listening to? I'm, I'm using my own today. <laughs> that is okay. Which is, uh, everybody needs a song with my buddies from Old Dominion. Uh, and obviously announced the new deluxe edition of Famous Friends coming out. So there's going to be more stuff on the way from that, but very, very excited. Saw a little little preview of the, the grayed out tracks that you can't get yet. Yeah. Little Jimmy Allen. Jimmy Allen is on a song. Cassie Pope. Yeah, we went back and uh, did a couple acoustic versions that are not necessarily just acoustic, more like stripped down versions of uh, Think of You and I'm Coming Over that no one has been able to get yet. And then um, a couple other originals that are on there that are just me. So very, very pumped. They're all good. Go pre-order. The, save it. The, the reception for, for the uh, tandem between you guys and Old Dominion, I mean, there was a lot of people very, very pumped and excited about that song coming out. So, And uh, the reception seemed to be pretty good. I mean, I'm excited about it, but it's mine. So it's 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 nice seeing everybody else finally getting to hear this song and uh, being being pumped about it. Can I ask? I like the video you guys did too, where you you both cheered it on the bus, and that was a, it was a pretty good collaboration between that as well. Yeah, that was fun. I was curious because I actually, I really do not know the answer and you probably do. So when a deluxe version of the album comes out, do those counting stats then also, like if Famous Friends is about to be gold and then you put yes. out the deluxe, yes. that, that makes, that, that would, pushes it yes. over. That would push it over. Cool. Everyone pre-save immediately. <laughs> Go get it. Go three get it. Three billion streams and we three, get those. Three billion streams. I will send you every demo, every songwriter we've ever done. <laughs> ever. <laughs> All right, what do you guys got for this week? <laughs> well, I'll go first. and Second, technically. Second. Oh. Yeah. First is the worst, second is the best. Um, so <laughs> go ahead. <laughs> All right, so this week, this song, I don't know why I love it so much. It's just, we know it's not a word, but I don't care. Handsomer by Russ, but the remix with the girl from TikTok, because it is awesome. If you, I, I know. If you know the song, you know. You do. You yeah. do. It's it's just a fun. It's a song. word. Handsomer. Handsomer. A, isn't sure. it more handsome? Sure. What? There's a uh, there's a barber shop the, over by Santa's. Maybe. There's a barber shop over by Santa's pub called Handsomizer. You know we've gone off the rails when Haley is trying to teach us grammar <laughs> in the middle of the show. <laughs> Handsomer. It's a fun uh, song. Whatever. Josh, what do you got? <laughs> I've got. The Magic in Me. Magic by B.O.B. Nice. Oh. I love that song. It just makes you kind of want to do the Carlton dance. It kind of does. It really does. Yeah. I'm just, now it's going through my head, so that's awesome. I'm going to be stuck there all day. <laughs> yeah, you're welcome. <laughs> Ryan, what do you got? Mine is definitely not safe for work this week. It oh. is a 2003 throwback uh, with a collaboration between Chingy, Ludacris, and Snoop. And the song is Holiday Inn. Mm -hmm. Oh. Heard nice. that one this morning on some, some random throwbacks. And I will tell you again, because the first three words of the song are definitely not safe for work. So do not play it if you're at work right now. My song isn't <laughs> safe for work either, but we all know that by now. But yeah. yeah. Great picks, everyone. Nice picks, guys. Nice <laughs> picks. And uh, again, if you haven't already gone and got a copy and streamed it, go listen to Everybody Needs a Song with Me in Old Dominion. Do it. Pre-save deluxe version. Thank you. Three billion streams. 
Let's go to movies. Movies. Uh, by the way, if you do notice, this is going to be a little shorter than our normal podcast runtime because I overslept and Ryan has something <laughs> that we're going to run up against. He's got uh, actual other meetings that he has to go to. <laughs> so uh, forgive me for uh, for this one being a little short this week. Uh, the movie was The Bad Guys. Um, 87% on Rotten Tomatoes, 94% of Google users like this movie. Uh, after a lifetime of legendary heists, notorious criminals Mr. Wolf, Mr. Snake, Mr. Piranha, Mr. Shark, and Ms. Tarantula are finally caught to avoid a prison sentence. The animal outlaws must pull off their most challenging con yet, becoming model citizens. Under the tutelage of their mentor, Professor Marmalade, uh, the dubious gang sets out to fool the world that they're turning good. $90 million at the box office. Dang. Dang. And I did not realize this until I actually started like going down through it and looking. I didn't realize that was Sam Rockwell that was Mr. Wolf. Mm-hmm. I don't I like realize how they that's who all that have was. like Mr., 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 Mrs. Like, why are they not just Wolf mm. or Bob? Like, Bob. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Mr. Bob. Mr. Bob, do you? Um, yeah, pretty much everybody. Has, I, I didn't also didn't realize that was Mark Marin, was Mr. Snake. Oh, interesting. Yeah, um, I I would say the best way to describe what the general consensus. I'm not going to spoil anything. We don't need the spoilers button. He was. Uh, so you just want to hit so it. Defeated. Go ahead. Go ahead. Hit the button. <laughs> no, hit your button. Go ahead. Time for some spoilers. I'm sorry, buddy. I, that, didn't, that, I didn't mean to take that away just, from you. I just really love that one. You just <laughs> you got really <laughs> worked sad. really hard on that one. Um, it's like five, <laughs> five of me singing. Yes, it is. <laughs> so uh, I, I think the general consensus is good movie, not great. It looks like from the previews, it was like this is going to be hilarious. And then like it wasn't a bad movie. It just... Did it good, live not, up? Good, to, not great. Like they picked all the best parts in the. In, uh huh. You know what I mean? Like in the like there movie. wasn't much movie outside of this, right? That's yeah. that's kind of you. If you've watched the trailer, you know exactly what this movie is about. It's definitely no Secret Life of Pets because that was no, amazing. No, that that one's on another level for me. And well, the second one, and it's, Zootopia. Uh, Zootopia, it, it, Zootopia was good. It seems pretty ominous that a movie called The Bad Guys, that's basically an anime movie, like smashed Liam Neeson's thriller in theaters, which did not, did not do good. I Memory, didn't even know. Uh, was not, uh, wait, Liam I didn't Neeson even know there was a, a Liam out. Neeson movie out. Yeah, Liam Neeson has a movie, Memory, and uh, it's it's released, launched with an estimated 3.1 million. Oof. Does this not speak to a bigger issue, which is where there's some Liam Neeson fatigue of him like, I will find you. And I will take care of business. Like I, I liked what was the one that we saw? I'm Batman. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> what was the one that uh where like the house had some really bad CGI flames? Oh, oh. oh. do you remember that one? <sighs> yeah. And I it, that wasn't here's, bad. The, here's the bad thing. I liked the movie. Couldn't tell you the name of it. Couldn't tell you the name of it. Couldn't tell you anything that happened in it other than Liam Neeson was in there and kicking some ass as yeah. usual. And yeah. really bad fire CGI. Really bad fire CGI. <laughs> and I think that's sort of that, like we're just kind of like okay that's where we are now with liam neeson yeah a little bit i will i will say it was a quiet weekend in at the box office because i think everybody is gearing up for what will be this upcoming weekend which is the release of dr strange in the multiverse of madness which is coming up on friday can we please wait to see this movie though because key west songwriters festival is this weekend oh yeah I'm going to be down there the whole week. I propose we push it back a week. Yes. Because I know right. all three of us will be down there. <sighs> so what are what are we going to watch instead? It, ha- it can't be a movie theater one because, again, we'll be gone most of the week. I have, I, have a, I have a suggestion. Oh, dear. Because, because we have a new Top Gun movie coming out. Why don't we go and I'm watch not a top retro gun. Top Gun? No, I, I, I don't. Cruise. I have to tell you something. I don't like Top Gun. I know. Uh, let's watch it. Let's watch it and get your thoughts on it. I, I don't like it. 
The original one? I, I don't. I also do not like the original one. However, I am buying all the Glenn Powell stocks, so I feel like the new one will be pretty good. <laughs> Glenn Powell, all right, if you're listening, have, you're not. But if you are. <laughs> if you, if you happen to be listening. Uh, I have a movie suggestion. Okay. It is an old, is it, it's a throwback movie. Okay. It does feature Will Smith. Wild Wild West. I hate that movie. Enemy of the State. Oh, great movie. Ooh, yeah. Never seen that. Enemy of the State. Oh, you've it's never a, seen oh, Enemy of the State. It's so yep. good. That's what we're doing. All right. Enemy of the State uh, from 1998. It's a throwback. It's so good. Will Smith is is stellar in it. So, ready for it. Ryan, can I can I ask you to take like six inches away from the microphone that, yeah. you're, that you're blowing up with the audio? Thank you. Is this better? Much yes, better. Way better. Thanks, bud. <laughs> hey, at least, can, do I sound like a robot? You no, sound you know, like you muffled. sound better. It sounds better than when you're doing it like this. <laughs> Gene Hackman, Will Smith, Enemy of the State. <laughs> enemy of the go. State. <laughs> Gene Hackman, what a great career, and yet, what has he been in in the last 20 years? Hang on. Well, here we go. This is over. His fight. last movie was from 2006, and it was Superman 2. He was Lex Luthor. Oh, that's right. Wait, Gene Hackman is a... Uh... Wait, who is he? <laughs> I loved him in Jury Duty. Did you guys ever see that movie? Wait, do you have a picture of him? Yes, he was good in Jury Duty. Jury Duty was excellent. He was good in Enemy of the State, obviously. I mean, Behind he enemy really lines. Had... He likes movies with the word enemy in them. <laughs> <clears throat> There's really not, I mean, for for such a, a big name in the, the acting world, he really hasn't done a lot of really good movies that are memorable. Uh, Other friend, than all the, the Superman French Connection. French Connection was great. That was yeah. a good one. Unforgiven. Yeah, but you're going back to the seventies. <laughs> I mean, yeah, but again. Everyone has their prime. Yeah. All right. We're gonna try something different. Let's go to the hot take. Hot take. So thanks to Amazon. Oh gosh, how am I gonna open this thing? <laughs> <laughs> you didn't need to open it. Should have done it already. Should have done that ahead of time. I was trying to make it like dramatic, like we will unbox like an unboxing, unboxing. on YouTube. Uh, so thanks to the creators of What Do You Meme, they have a party game called Hot Takes. And obviously, the second I saw it, I thought, well, we need we need this. We're going we're gonna to try this for a couple weeks and see how it goes. Like we're going to blind hot take. We are, we are blind hot taking. And Chris, I want you to... Do we need to cut the deck, though? I don't know. <laughs> I feel like it's like necessary. Cut the deck. And we're not opposed to skipping a hot take if it sucks. Yeah, we, we have no idea. We have not prepped. We have not come in with pre-knowledge. Pre-knowledge. All right. And how, how no did research. you say your position? With your, uh, by the way, Chris, that was an impressive cut of the deck there. Step away Thanks, from the sir. microphone, Ryan. Thanks, sir. Uh, Thank you. Oh. oh, speaking if of time, time travel. If time travel existed, then changing something from the past would change everything about the future. So we talked the about paradox. this. We already talked about that, so... <laughs> Try number two. Number two. <clears throat> Coffee smells bad. Do you do you agree? Ooh. I don't. I love the smell of coffee. I really do. Haley, do you agree? No, it tastes like not taste. Smells. It smells no. delicious, but it does not taste how it smells. I'll say that. Ryan. The flavor of the coffee makes a difference here in the smell because for me, hazelnut, not a good fan of hazelnut smelling coffee. But you oh, give me a little see, French I vanilla. Do, I do like hazelnut. French vanilla in the morning, <laughs> oh. actually brewed pot of coffee. Oh, yum. Oh, French vanilla. Give it to me. <laughs> that is so out of like randomness right now because you froze. We're going to try another one. Let's. <laughs> <laughs> you froze. Let's try one more. Let's see. This game might not work. Emotional support animals shouldn't be considered service animals. Correct. That is 100% correct. Why? Because emotional support and service animals are completely different. Service animals are trained animals to help you with your medical condition. They are actually trained animals. Emotional support dogs are literally just your dog to like have and to be comforted around. It's not as trained animals. So counterpoint, there are some emotional support dogs that have been trained to like lay their head on your lap or do things to lower your anxiety. So they are trained. Not, not, not like 
because people and their emotional support dogs that are sitting See, in your then lap. I would say and, that's like, a service animal. Yeah, I, like if they're. I would agree, but they're but but what's the difference? Don't you have to apply for service, or do you have to go through a class? You have to have a certified trained dog to have. A service animal you are selected that's why not everyone gets service animals because you have to be selected and go through the training with the dog does that make sense so a lot of people you have to go through a process to get a trained service dog so you have to be picked i guess is the best way i can describe it do you understand what i'm saying no <laughs> so for a service dog you have to be picked you you, you try to get a service dog you because they're specifically trained, especially depending if you have like epilepsy or. Here's here's my hot take on this. Okay, I can't stand the people that like have like like emotional support chipmunks. You know, like these people that have just these random animals that they just bring around as emotional support animals, like an emotional support anteater. Like we can't do that. What are we doing? Who has like, an anteater? Squirrels That's shouldn't awesome. be an emotional. <laughs> That's awesome. But you can basically register anything to be an emotional support animal. I just, like I just dropped my phone on the floor, Ryan. <laughs> I just, I, I've, I've given up. Question, today. should <laughs> I get an emotional support falcon for the band? <laughs> yes. Should I, should I get into falconry? Oh, my God. Okay, so we should look through these before we yes. do that. Yeah, <laughs> we're, we're going to we're gonna have to. But I bet there's some good ones in here because I know is a hot dog a sandwich is in this deck somewhere. I have a good nope, one. I have a good that one. <laughs> what, did I have a, say? what did I say? Wait, nope. Let me see. Let me see. Nope. All I, right. I have. I have. I have a good one. I this. I just picked one that I think we can actually do. Let's go. So, the Beatles are overrated. Yes. I've never been a huge fan of the Beatles, and I will say that right now. Whether you're a fan of them or not, are they overrated, properly rated, or underrated? Overrated. Why? I just don't like it. <laughs> yeah, I, but I don't. Over, I personally, I, I would think they're overrated because well, how many number ones did they have? A Ooh. lot. Yeah, they had twenty-one. <laughs> they had twenty-one, which is the most of any band. I'll tell you what, I do hate the song Beach Boys. Is that it? That's a band. That's a band. Oh, I thought there was a song that they did called Beach Boy. Clearly, I am not a fan of the Beatles. All right. Or the well, Beach Boys, Beatles, apparently. The Beatles have sold 1.6 billion singles in the U.S. and 177 million albums. Their worldwide sales top 600 million. They have 21 Billboard Hot 100 number ones that is the most of any band. And Hey Jude enjoyed the longest run on the charts, 23 weeks in all. I still think they're overrated. I See, I don't really love Hey Jude if you're going to have me pick my favorite Beatles. Song. No, it wouldn't be my favorite Beatles song either. Um, all right, so music nerd. I do... Do you think they're overrated? I don't. I think they are properly rated. I don't, okay. I don't think they're overrated. I don't think they're underrated. I think that their impact on music, their impact on lyric writing, melodies, how to... Um, craft melodies on interesting chord shapes and changes and things because they were a very musical jazz influenced band. There was a lot of stuff going on in their later records. Well, and they, the miking techniques and yeah. stuff that they and did that no one else was doing at the time. They were the first ones to go, hey, so we have this four track machine that bounces down to two. Why don't we get two of them and then we'll take those four and we'll put it on these two and then we'll add two more tracks. Now we have more tracks to use. We have more things. And this, this is what started what is now modern recording. Yeah. Yeah. Multi-tracking, which is what we do on every record and demo and everything ever since. Um, they are pioneers of all types of music across all genres. And I think they are properly rated. I think they are exactly where, we should hold them up. It, it's just, but again, we, we want to keep this simple for a poll. So it is, are the Beatles overrated? Yes or no? No. Yes. Bear, you say yes. Yes. Ryan? I'm saying no, because there have been discussions of whether or not they are the greatest rock band of all time. Oh, no. I don't think they're in that category or pantheon, but they are definitely not overrated. They are they are accurately rated as one of the greatest of all time. Okay, I'm going to tell it's, you. It's a yes or no. It's a yes or no yes. question. No. No, there. What was the what? question again? Are, are they the Beatles overrated? overrated? <laughs> no. All right. Just so we're clear, I don't know what either of you are going to list as your best rock band of all time, but that band would tell you that the Beatles are their favorite band. So 
You just have to. Maybe. You have to go back. No, not. <laughs> it's not going to be a maybe. Well. You I, said the Rolling Stones would say the Beatles are their favorite rock band of all time. Yes. You were to ask them. Yes. Hmm. I bet if there's a survey out there, I'm going to Google this. Well, I'd, I mean, I'd I'd, I want to leave it up to I want to leave it up to everybody, anyways, because yeah. they're, they're going to be able to go vote. You, on you've this, been alarmingly so. quiet. What do you think? I think the Beatles are a little overrated. Yeah, <laughs> I know I'm going to get smoke for that. I know, I know, like a lot of people are going to be mad at me for saying that, but I think I think they're a little bit overrated. Is it overrated because you don't like them, or is it overrated because you just don't feel like their impact is? No, the the impact is is definitely there. I I would say, you look at the impact and go, I don't see it. And that's the overrated. I I just wouldn't sit down, and nonstop listen to the Beatles. I wouldn't either. But I think there's a lot of people that would say they are in the pantheon of you should be able to listen to all of their catalog front to back without stopping. I I just some of their stuff to me is like very experimentative what what word am i looking at experimental yeah. thank you and very interesting and very important to music but there's some of those albums where i'm just like hmm there's songs where i'm like i i actively do not like this straight up like i know people are going to be you, mad this, at me for saying this but this is a generational gap is it not because if you ask if, if we had this conversation 15 years ago i think this is a different conversation dude you're talking to somebody that listens to marty robbins records but also think of I, this <laughs> it's it's not a it's not a an age gap or a, a lack of information on my part it's just how i feel like when i think of like impactful if you asked someone maybe in their mid-20s or early 20s right now to name two or three beach boy songs they couldn't but if you asked for a, beatles what i <laughs> Beatles song they couldn't but if you ask them to name an Elvis song or Michael Jackson song like they would they could you know what I mean like it's the impact that it makes on like further generations that I think is why they're overrated I would I would also say that you just named two of the most influential and iconic performers of all time as a comparison to the Beatles so so the Beatles are overrated. that would mean they're not overrated <laughs> I don't know. We're going to leave it up to you guys. I want to see what the vote like this is. Oh, oh, that, that, oh there that, it is. that seals the Monday today. <laughs> yeah, that's, it's Monday. Thank you guys so much for listening to Quad with Chris Young. Make sure you go vote on the poll. Uh, also, check out Everybody Needs a Song with Me and Old Dominion. I love you guys. From Haley, Josh, and Ryan, we'll see you next week.